huge video. It's tricky. Let me be honest, it's, it's, it's very tricky. There's a lot of things involved, a lot of moving parts in filming a YouTube video. There's coming up with the initial idea, finding out what you actually want to do a video on. Then there's the writing part of that video. Do you script it? Do you outline it? What do you do? Do you just wing it? Kind of like what I'm doing right now. Then there's the filming part about it. So grabbing the camera, grabbing the sound, and then producing something that you think is good enough to then take into the editing stages which is the final part, and probably, in my opinion, the best bit, and also the part where the story comes together. And then it comes down to deciding what editing software you want to use and how to actually edit your video. Do you spend the time to learn the software, or do you hire someone to do it for you? Which, by the way, I don't recommend until you've actually started doing it yourself. And each one of these processes and workflows has been thought out by the creators on the platform already. Each one has a unique spin on how to tell their story, and that's the best part about this platform is that's the you in YouTube. That is what makes the person unique. That's what makes the platform so diverse. So finding your own process and your own way to tell your stories is, uh, is an important thing. But if you're just starting out, it's probably the most hardest thing to figure out as well. So today I thought I would jump in and have a discussion about how I actually film my YouTube videos, what the process is from going to start to finish, and maybe break down a few of the behind the curtain things, behind the scenes things, so you guys can see a more of a bird's eye view of how somebody like myself would go about making YouTube video. And by the way, my process is not perfect. I'm still figuring things out and I'll explain those as I'm going through this. I wanna be as crystal clear as I possibly can through this entire process so you guys can get an idea of things that I might be able to improve on or things that you can improve on when you do it yourself. So let's jump in and have a talk about that. But before we do, I wanna give a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, and that is Nerd or Die. If you're a live streamer that's looking for a really cool, clean, and aesthetically pleasing design for your stream so you can just focus on making the best content you possibly can, then Nerd or Die is the place to go. From banners to profile pictures to webcam, is that a bell ringing? There was a bell ringing. From banners, panels, webcam animations, alerts, transitions, and uh, a whole lot more. Along with the huge collection of designs already on their website, you can do a really awesome thing and download the source files for that overlay so you can tweak the design and get exactly the look you're after for your live stream. So go ahead, check them out. The link is down in the description below. That link also helps support the channel as well, by the way. And if you want to save a little bit of money, then make sure you use code SAM for a very cheeky 15% off at checkout. So with that out of the way, let's jump in and start talking about the first stage of the video making process. And that is the writing stage for me. That's kind of coming up with the idea, coming up with the concept for the video and just figuring out the entire thing that I'm going to do and what I'm going to film. Most of my ideas usually start in one of these things. These are called notebooks for those of you who are in the digital age. These are called things you write in with pen and paper. Uh, these usually start in one of these. This is the kind of my main go-to for ideas. I have an idea comes to me, I write it out in here. In fact, the video that I'm filming right now is actually kind of outlined and scripted in this book. That kind of shows you the uh, the process that I go through when it comes to an idea, write it down in here, and uh, so it's just not bouncing around in here. It's in some place that I remember. And a lot of those ideas come from a multitude of places, and most of them come from myself, so things that I really want to do and really want to create and make and challenge myself to do. Other places include like YouTube comments, Twitch chats, uh, tweets and things like that from you guys that want to see videos from me and see my take on things. And then finally, videos that I see other creators do on the net as well. Other YouTubers that have made a video that I go, oh, I actually really know my own input on this. I can provide some value to this as well. And I usually use that to kind of springboard myself into an idea and then try out new things with the same concept and the same idea. And then from there, I kind of throw those into a notebook and then they get digitized. So I do actually put them in a place on my Mac or my PC or whatever. I use a service called Trello, which is like a board with lists on it that you can make cards for and that you can actually move things around in that board. And it's a really good workflow thing for me. So I can come with an idea, put it in my ideas board, and then I can move that to pre-production if I'm writing it, production if I'm filming it, and then post-production if it's into the editing stage of things. So it's a really good workflow thing, a good bird's eye view for me to see where my ideas are 
in the workflow, in the chain of the process that takes to make a YouTube video. And then once my ideas are out of here and onto paper or onto a Trello board, it then comes down to actually scripting or outlining the video. Now this part is very much a personal preference thing and I actually started off fully scripting my videos and writing out verbatim what I would say on screen but over time and actually doing these videos a lot more I've started going for more of an outline approach so kind of just bullet pointing things down and kind of going with a natural organic flow between point to point but what I would recommend is actually starting off writing word for word what you want to say so you have a clear structure and it gets out of here onto a piece of paper or onto your screen so you can just focus on how the story flows rather than worrying about what you're going to say and then worry about the delivery afterwards and then the more videos you do you can then refine that process and go you know what i want to be more natural in this video i want to focus more on how i say things rather than what i say and that's a process you learn by doing more of it but if you are struggling with that and you don't have this kind of workflow and you are looking to start making videos but you're struggling on finding that that hook the idea i recommend to you listen to a guy called Gary V. Gary V has a great little anecdote that I like to use fairly frequently and that is document don't create and that's a very interesting way of looking at how to make a video obviously we're creating a video we're doing this process we are talking about it we're creating something I'm documenting a process right now I'm talking about how I make my videos and that's a story a process can be a story a documentation or a documentary is a story so don't think that oh because i'm documenting a process i can't make it fun or engaging or entertaining for the viewer that's not what he says documenting a process like being good at a video game and how to get better at a video game is documenting a process it's documenting a workflow and you can absolutely make that an entertaining and relatable piece of content for your audience flipping the perspective on that process and deciding how can i turn this into relatable content is a great way to start off making videos and then the more you do start making videos the more ideas you generate down the line it becomes quite easy really i don't say easy but i guess it becomes easier than starting out with nothing but uh, it's a workflow that takes time takes practice and uh the only way you get there is by doing stuff. And that is pretty much generally what I do for number one when it comes to writing and coming with ideas for these videos. Let's move on to number two and show you the filming part and what I do for filming these YouTube videos. The filming part of these YouTube videos takes place here or more or less anywhere in the room. I have built my studio up to be able to kind of dart between different locations i have seven different filming locations in this room that allow me to create the kind of videos that i want to make and to be able to put you know more effort into the videos to make them more creatively diverse each and every time it gives me more freedom more flexibility to be able to be more creative and if you want to check out the room and see those different locations i did a studio tour not a while ago i'll leave a link up here as well as down in the description below go check that out if you're interested but where i pick and choose kind of determines the flow of the video and how i want it to come across and appear and make it feel if for example i'm doing a lot of b-roll and product stuff i might shoot it at the workbench and use that angle for the particular shot because it fits in with the environment and it kind of nicely matches the other shots in the sequence and in the video also for example i'm doing a tutorial shot and i use this angle instead to kind of show context for what i'm working on you can see the imac in shot and you get more of an idea for the kind of things that i'm going to be doing in that video the different feel and approaches i take with each video is it's really dependent on the kind of mood and the feel and the tone i want to set and i have the full flexibility of the room to decide that and that's what's uh, really quite uh, advantageous about this area but let's talk about equipment for a quick second i currently shoot all of my videos on the panasonic gh5 with the leica 8 to 18 millimeter lens it's a workhorse of a camera and a great lens it gives them that full wide angle look that i really, really like as well as a nice close-up if i want that as well the aperture is not that great but to be fair with a micro four third sensor it's gonna be kind of you know one of those things i am looking to upgrade to the uh, sony a7s mark iii very very soon as soon as uh, that arrives i'll be switching to that and the gh5 will then become a b camera or maybe just my dedicated stream camera we'll see what it does and i record all of my audio into the rode ntg4 which is then plugged into an external sound recorder which is the zoom f6 i like to record my audio externally i am looking for ways to actually improve this workflow and record internally i did have the gh5 external or xlr adapter for the top uh didn't really like the sound that came out of it i felt it sounded pretty uh, the preamps for me weren't as great as the ones on the zoom so uh 
I opted for this, but I am looking forward to seeing what the Sony's equivalent is on the A7S Mark III. So once I get that in, I'll probably do like a quick review. And let me know down below if you want to see a video going over sound and recording and why I choose this workflow. And let me know if you want to see that video on sound design and sound recording for YouTube videos. That then gets recorded separately and then in the edits, uh, Scott will sync them up. We'll get into that a little bit later on. In terms of lighting, I use two or sometimes three Glowpad 350Ds. You can find these on Amazon. And these are pretty nice, soft, light LED panel lights that I have. And they are bi-colored, which means they can go from a cool color to a warmer color. So you can go from daylight to more of a tungsten orange kind of look. And that really helps if you are trying to set the scene or set the lighting for the entire room having that flexibility of just turning a dial and going from one color temperature to the other is fantastic but these lights are going to change pretty soon here as well i'm actually looking to move to some uh nanolite forza 60s that i have my eyes on and i'll be getting those hopefully soon and we'll be changing these to some pretty nice softbox lighting uh, in the very near future and also changing how they actually fix to my room right now they are on uh, light stands and i'm looking to actually mount them to the ceiling using that uh, bar that I mentioned originally. I think it's in the Twitter video actually on my Twitter, which by the way, go check that out, link in the description below. But I showed off a cool little thing that I have mounted in my room, which is a nice metallic galvanized bar that just sits at the top of my ceiling and I can mount things to this, to lights, to sound, to even the camera for the opening shot was mounted to this pole. So it's a very versatile, a piece of equipment that I'm going to be mounting my lights to in the future. And then it comes down to the actual filmmaking process of this video. And I usually record in massive chunks or long segments. So we just have one long clip in the edit that gets chopped up and then work with that way. I find this to be a lot easier, especially when you're doing a lot of talking to the camera, having to stop record it, record again, stop record it, record again, as well as working with external audio. It gets a bit finicky and a little bit frustrating, a little bit kind of, you know, difficult to keep track of all the files. So I usually like to record in one long take and luckily enough, the GH5 allows for that's got continuous recording on and I can go past 30 minutes record time and I'm fine. But you can absolutely, you know, chop up your segments if you want to and just do line after line if you find that's gonna be easier and you're in a much more of a simplified workflow. I find it easier to record in one long take and then just, you know, edit the bits out that I don't particularly want in the video. And speaking of the editing process, let's jump on over and show you guys that part of the YouTube making process. Once I've done all of the filming, I then proceed to start the editing process. And back in the day, I used to do all the editing myself, but I've recently employed the services of an editor. I know, the editor, hiring an editor, that's just the thing. But when you want to expand and grow, you expand and grow the team. So I brought on Scott, AKA Wildfire, as the editor for the channel. And he's edited the last couple of videos, and he's also editing this one, and will be for future videos to come. But the problem with Scott is he currently lives all the way in America. So our time zones are a little bit different. We're not working in the same office space. So how do we collaborate and how do we work together? Well, I start off by uploading all of the media to a service called Frame.io. Frame.io is a service that myself, Scott, as well as Harris use when it comes to reviewing, uh, collaborating, and working together on different video projects. It's a place where I can upload the footage that I've shot for that day, including A-roll and B-roll material, and then Scott can download it, his end, and then edit the footage on his laptop. And we both work inside of Final Cut Pro 10, so collaboratively, it's really good working in the same software. So when Scott works on an edit, he can send me back the project files and the library to review if I need to make any changes, or I can send him motion templates and graphics that he can then start adding into his project and his workflow that I've customized and built. And all he needs to do is change some text or change some little things that I've already programmed for him. On that subject though, let's actually see what Scott has to say about that workflow and working inside of Final Cut Pro and using Frame.io inside of that collaborative workflow. So once Sam has uploaded all of the footage to Frame.io, I then go in and go into our shared project and I download all of that footage onto my laptop, which I will then bring into Final Cut Pro to start the editing process. So depending on the video that we end up doing, usually he'll send over graphic assets that I can then use on the video that he has actually created, but I can customize in Final Cut Pro. I do not have to use any motion software that is already done for me, and he sends all of that over to me. So usually I will do a first cut, and I will then send that over to Sam in Frame.io, and as you saw earlier, he will leave a couple revisions as stuff that he wants added or just completely changed and then I will do all of that and polish it over doing some J cuts and adding some music and graphics as most of these videos include 
And then after all of that is done, I will then render it into frame.io, which he can then download on his end and upload to YouTube as you guys see on the channel. So now that I'm done everything on my end, I'm actually gonna send you guys back over to Sam and he can explain just a couple more things that he does to wrap up the video process. So Scott has just uploaded an edit to frame.io and I can actually watch this back from my end and leave real time time code based markers and comments for him to review inside of Final Cut Pro. This isn't a sponsored video, by the way, for Frame.io. I just really love what they do. I think they're the best at what they do, and it's made this workflow, working with Scott, just so much easier when it comes to collaborating on these YouTube videos. So once all that is done, I pretty much just sign off on the video and give it the uh, green check mark of approval, download it, and then upload it to YouTube, which then is pretty much just titling and thumbnailing the video, which by the way, if you wanna learn more about uh, making thumbnails and thumbnail kind of design in general then make sure you click up here there's a video that I did with Harris and where we discussed our favorite thumbnails for the alpha gaming channel I'll leave a link to that also down below and if you guys want to see more of Scott and see what kind of things he does I've left his social links down in the description as well his YouTube his twitch and probably his Twitter so go ahead and uh, check those out and with that that is my YouTube well I should say our YouTube making process that is how we make videos on this channel and it's in development it's still being worked on it's going to evolve as things change and new things come out and you know technologies advance and all that fun stuff and uh, we'll see where things go in the future but for now that is what we do to make these videos for the channel and if you guys enjoyed the video then be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future and if you have any questions about what I mentioned in this video and want to have a more one-to-one -one discussion with me, then feel free to uh, jump into my Twitch chat. I'm live every single Tuesday and Thursday. The link for that is down below in the description. And if you want to maybe ask some questions to the larger community and get more of a community-focused feedback, then feel free to join the Discord. The link for that is also down below. And with that said and done, thank you guys so much for watching. You take it easy. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.